that's a thing that that coaches I don't know who we're talking to here, but they need to develop an eye. Right. And to develop an eye in, a, in an event that lasts a second and a half, you got to be able to slow things down. Yeah. And you got to be able to identify specifics. So. So hey everybody, it's uh, Eric Johnson from Airtay Throws Nation. I'm sitting down with my great friend, my mentor, Tony Chirelli. You will find in your throwing careers or coaching careers, you're always gonna have somebody that has a huge impact on your throwing. And Tony, the guy who's without a doubt had the biggest impact on me as a coach. Uh, I learned a ton from him, I still learn from him. He's in town for a meet. Like you said, Tony and I pretty much will agree on pretty much just most Terminology things. is usually our breakdown yeah not right. how we look at it right so and then uh the only thing we might disagree on is who's uh who's better looking but <laughs> there's no disagreement <laughs> so i just thought you know you're you're in town we we you know obviously we've had the covid thing training's been really tough especially for you in california you are with your fourth 200 foot discus thrower over you know you've had a very successful career I just thought I would ask some general questions about training. And again, you know, we used to joke around, how do you get so lucky? I mean, people used to say, how does he get so lucky? And it's, there's nothing lucky about success in throwing. You, you do have more talented guys that come around, but then when it That's gets, the lucky. That, that is that the- Every once in a while, somebody who has the talent. Right. Aiden being the perfect example. Of all the people I've coached, he is the first high school kid that I've coached that I think has the possibility of being an Olympian. Because all the rest of them, as good as they were, I thought they were all too small. Okay. Especially as the years went by. Right. You know, in the early, late 80s, early 90s, when I started kind of coaching you, some, there were still some smaller people around. But after going to a couple of European championships and Olympics, when you get in that stadium and you see people walk in, it's like, there's no little guys. No. <laughs> No short guys. And a funny story, Scott Mosier, when he threw his throw, out of the blue one day, Jay Sylvester called me and he just ragged on me because my guy's not big enough. <laughs> and so he just said, you, you got to start finding bigger bigger people. Like he, he said, Scott Mosier looks really good. He's got good technique, but he's too small. And Mosier was what, 6'3"? Six, 6'3". Three? Six, three. Yeah. yeah. And he was incredibly strong. Incredibly strong. Great yeah. technique. You know, but 6'3 is just, you're a midget when you get out in the international scene. The right. American scene, you're not. Right. But how good have we been in the discus over the last 20 years? Yeah, only if uh, just a handful of guys yeah. that have really Casey, performed. Who's 6'9". Yeah. And then... Jared and Ian both had... Ian had some success, uh, you know, somewhat, but not right. usually on the world scene. Yeah, and Jared was a finalist. I think it was Doha. Doha, yeah, yeah like 2000, or Daegu. Yeah. No, that was, yeah, I forget. We right. should, we Maybe should, fine, so. yeah. So here's what we'll do, since that won't be the most inspiring conversation for, you, for young throwers. For young throwers. Uh, uh, You're we'll, short, we'll, get, <laughs> go into something else. <laughs> and you know what, that's a good question because you've had a lot of success with a number of shorter guys. I've had my share of guys that have, have done fairly well too and they're not exceptionally tall. And nowadays, even you look at a guy like Joe Kovacs, Clearly, an, an exception. Shot puts but a different story than the distance. It, that is 100% you know, true. And that's the thing, like we talked about last night. It's, it's like football. It, it doesn't mean you can't have a good career and you can be good in high school and you can be good in college, but if you're a 6 3 left tackle, you're not going to play in the NFL. It's just not going to happen. Right. You, know, you might be good enough that they might move you to some other position. But you're not playing left tackle no matter how much you want to. <laughs> you know, so the same thing. If you're a six two discus thrower that's really, really good, it right. just hasn't shown since Anthony. Yeah. That I mean anybody in the, in the United States can pull that off. Yeah, and that guy if we can chase the win, you know, the Americans were good at that and get the big throws, but as soon as we get into stadiums, right. we're not very good. Taking it back to just like um, talking about the shot and the difference, or the shot and the discus, but in general, like for for young throwers and and new coaches, what do you think is the difference between training a brand new thrower who knows nothing versus training you know a high school kid versus obviously training them once they're collegiate or and, and older? Well, you know, there's a lot of 
positives to training somebody who's never done it because you don't have to break any bad habits that they've developed right. from where they came from. So that part of it, like Southern California where I coach, there's no discus. Even when they used to have junior high track and field, discus wasn't part yeah. of it. So you came into high schools when you started throwing the discus. Okay. Just like in California, you don't get to throw the javelin until you go to college. So right. you, know, you got to pick it up fast. And one of the reasons why there's not a lot of world-class javelin throwers out of California is you're not starting until you're 19 years old. It's yeah, late. it's tough. You can't, you can't match the reps. I, you know, I'm kind of thinking about this when you, you said you wanted to do it. I, I, I think, for me anyway, it's, it's the system. It's right. not just the technique. It's not just my philosophies that I put on the kids. Right. You know, it's the it's the system that brings about the the excellence. Right. And that's I think what a lot of coaches don't have. Yeah. They know a lot about throwing, but they don't know anything about weightlifting. But they have a fairly good idea about weightlifting, but they don't know anything about throwing. Or they're really good at getting people work, but they're terrible at technical aspects of things. So you see that in the weight of man throwing in mm -hmm. the ring. And uh, I think that's kind of my thing is that, that I've been able to put together a good system. Right. And so just talking about how big people are, I've had five, seven throwers throw over 60 feet and over 180 feet now. Right. I've had five, two girls throw 150 feet and 48 feet. They were obviously great athletes, but you don't see people of those sizes making those kind of no. marks. Right. Um, but I think it was the whole system that brought it together, not anything individually that I did. Mm -hmm. You know, it's putting it all together, I think, makes it. And that's really lacking on the high school level. Obviously, there's a lot right. of college coaches that do that. And, yeah. and I think as much as anything, once again, it's that they put together a good system. Yeah. You know, some people, it's like, oh, the weight room's not a big deal. I'm going to do this. And, you know, yeah. And, and I think that lacks. Right. So fortunately, I have a system. <laughs> yeah, I think it's if you want to be a good coach, it's what you got to do. Yeah, you have to have a system, and you, you've got to understand your athlete physically and mm -hmm. mentally. If you know about throwing, then you need to go learn about weightlifting. Right. If you know about weightlifting and you throws coach, then you need to go work on understanding how throws work. Right. Um, but you, you know, and then and then the in between, the how much do you work them, how little do you work them, kind of running is involved. Right. Other the things besides those two things, right? All have to work together. That's the problem. Like I've said, in any sport, the thing with private coaches is the aspect of I've, I, every kid I've ever asked had a private coach. Did he ask you what we did today? Right. And so then if the private coach is not asking what you did at the high school, and he really doesn't understand what you need to get better. Right. Because if you did 50 stadiums and he's doing stadiums today, it's like, okay. You don't, you don't, need, to, yeah, you don't need to do that. <laughs> Thankfully, I always ask my athletes. Yeah. I, I have you to. Have like, what do you do? Work out today? Okay, we're yeah. not, not going to try to throw hard. You know, it's like, yeah. that's not going to work. Exactly. For people that don't know, for we did the Tony Torelli Olympian Throws Clinic was something we built. Tony started it. I kind of got involved about your fifth year. Yeah. yeah and we just did our, what, 29th? year so we've done 23 of these but taking from that and then obviously things have changed and all those guys got older and we've gotten older and and then i had started arite and then throwing chain reaction program and we've utilized that system and you've been to those camps and you've had good things to say which is nice but you know kind of talking about that and we because we talk about different terminologies but you had said which i was you know happy to hear like this is exactly what people need to be learning and so when you're talking about uh, a system i'll just kind of ask you for your feedback like what did you think of how we break it down and because the idea is of course to teach people how to understand complexity faster right, right. see the throw and, know and how to break it down when you're teaching multiple people and having a set guidelines makes it easier for them to understand actually back to you which was i had art you know i've been coaching for 16 years when i started coaching you but it opened up things for me being able to go to the elite throwers camp down in san diego and certain things that i hadn't, hadn't been exposed to right. uh, before that just being a high school coach but so that aspect of you know, was Bing Yu. Right. And how he broke it down. Right. You 
you know, wind up first sing double support, first single support yeah. flight. So that's how I do it. And it's not exactly that, but your pillars are basically those positions. And so Bi biomechanically is, yeah, sound, yeah. As long as that is the thing. And as a coach to his athlete, you could say spaghetti and broccoli. To them, that means get on your right leg, <laughs> and they get on their right leg, yeah. and any, the cue that works is the cue that works. Right. But a more systematic, approach to it is going to help the athlete understand it better. Yeah. And I, I totally see that in their system. So, you know, that's a good point. And, and again, you know, kind of uh, not to bring it all back to, you know, the throwing chain reaction system, but I mean, that was the motivation. You know, people don't know Tony started his camp to help the sport, to Sports help it sport, in, right. in Orange County and get more coaches. And funny enough, you didn't get as many coaches as kind of, and then it started to get, we started to get more and more coaches. Right. And now, originally when it first started, I was just doing that. Right. I wasn't really, you know, coaches, basically it was coaches would ask if they could stick around. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, just bring a couple athletes and they can stick around. Right, right, right. And then, you know, it was about when you started in that we started including coaches into it. So right. It Obviously, that is, I think, one of the things... I pulled that was always the, the mission of the of your camp that I became the director of and then so that just kind of carried into when I created it it was like you know this is about getting the sport better and putting out more information cuz there's there's good information out there and then there's some really bad information out there I think you you know you probably come across YouTube videos and if you don't know anything about throwing you could watch a video that's got, you know, you, you, there's some videos out there that have like, you know, 100,000 views and they're not very good videos. Yeah. People think, oh, it's got a lot of views, it must be good. Yeah. And so that's obviously why we try to put out the content. So that, that was definitely, you know, something I kind of carried in from you and I thought, okay, with technology, because when you and I started coaching together, there was no YouTube. Yeah. There was, there was no, cell phones were like large and heavy and there was no smartphones. And I think obviously, you know, with that opportunity came like, oh wait, we can get this information out. That, I think that's a thing that, that coaches, I don't know who we're talking to here, but they need to develop an eye. Right. And to develop an eye in an in event that lasts a second and a half, you got to be able to slow things down. Yeah. And you got to be able to identify specifics so you, just like you want the kids to work on a single thing you right. have to look at a single thing right so if you're looking at the right foot that's all you should be looking at is the right foot and then being able to slow things down which has always been my I don't know through sports or whatever it kind of seems like we've always been able to do it but if you can slow things down it really helps on meet day right although now you can film and look at it back in the day you couldn't look at the no film. you can just on the your coaches couldn't even look at them. Right. They yeah, they've changed light. the rules finally. Now the height, the, the athletes can look at them. Right. You know? Yeah, because that's what NH or yeah. NFHS, right. National Federation, right? High schools. Right. Yeah. So now, because so there were, yeah. That, that's a you know, it's a big deal, and it's you don't want to look at too much. You don't want to spend too much time mm -hmm. doing it, but it, it's definitely a tool that you know. That's the thing. If you see things.